say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the church say hallelujah. It seems like the choir wanna tell me faith. Hallelujah. Who's going to serve the thing that's true?
Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we come now before the throne of grace. We come, Father, to give you thanks. We come to praise you. And Father, we come to give you glory. For you are God, and beside you there is none like you. Thank you, God. Father, as we come to this part of the service, we acknowledge that you are our comfort. We acknowledge, God, that you are peace that surpasses understanding. Today, God, we ask that you will let your spirit move upon this dust, servant, and each and every one of the family members, the friends that are sorry. Let your spirit bring comfort, peace, joy, and happiness. Do it, God, as only you can do. For we know, God, that if you have to reach way down, you will. We're praying, God, that you would touch down to the depths of the hurt, the depths of the sorrow for the loss of their loved one. Reach the children. And let them know, God, in your power and by your might that you are able to carry them a little further, even to the end of time. Hold them by their hand. Comfort them. Be a present help for them. When the sorrow of loss come upon them, God, we pray that you will come in like a flood and let your joy be felt upon them. Father, we thank you for the life of Deborah. We pray now, God, that she has been received by you. And her life on this side have been a legacy for all those that are left behind. And we thank you, God, and we pray that you will give us a word, God, from the preacher man today. A word, God, that will call us to look to you for all of our help, all of our spiritual needs, and all of our guidance and direction through this troubled land that we're in right now. Just be a blessing to us today. Father, we just praise you. We give you honor and glory. Pray and ask these and other blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord is coming out of the book of Job, chapter 14. reads, man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He feareth also as a shadow and continueth not. And doth thou open thy eyes upon such a one and bringest me into judgment with thee? Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not only. Seeing his days are determined number of his months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his bonds, and he cannot pass. Turn from him that he may rest till he shall accomplish as an hireling his day. But there is hope of a tree. If it be cut down, that it will sprout again and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Though the roots wax old in the earth, and the stock thereof die in the ground, yet through the scent of water it shall bud and bring forth boughs like a plant. But man dieth and wasteth away, yea, man giveth up the ghost. And where is he? As the waters fell from the sea, and the flood decayeth, Drive up. So man lieth down, and it riseth not, till the heavens be no more. They shall not awake nor be raised. Oh, that thou wouldst hide me in the grave, that thou wouldst call and keep me in secret, until thy wrath be passed, that thou wouldst appoint me a set time, and remember me. Lastly, 14 says that if a man dies, yes. shall he live again? All the days.
days of my appointed time will I wait until my change comes. So says the word of the Lord. Amen. My condolences to the family. Unfortunately, I'm going to be too. I'm coming out of second For well, we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. Three. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do grow, being burdened not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon the mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now that has wrought us from the self same things God, who also has given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk not by faith, not by, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. May God bless the reader, the hearer, time we have a little back. to breathe my heart and torn in pieces it's my offering please take me to the king truth is our time options are
surrendered it all just to get to the king. Yeah. Amen. Have you ever been in that predicament or position where you couldn't go no further and needed, you know, how to get where you needed to go but couldn't get there? Amen. If you take it to King Jesus. Amen. If you take it to King Jesus. Amen. You won't have to go there. He'll carry you there. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sapphira. Amen. Amen. Just let the Spirit minister to you and you just have a healing heart. Amen. Amen. He's speaking to you. He's working on with you and he's working on you. At this time, the program provides for reflections. Some of you have shared some good moments with Deborah. Now is your time to come up and reflect back on some of those good times. Amen? The program said two minutes, and if the Spirit is working with you, I'll let it work with you. Amen? But if the Spirit ain't working with you, I'll stop you after two. Amen? Amen. So come on up. Come on like this. Okay. I just want to thank you for letting me share that with y'all.
of the parents' children. And she kept saying, I love you, Diane, I love you. Make sure you continue to cover and clean. Make sure all of us come. So I'm just telling you, we need to get together and come on out. I'm having a letter from June, uh, July 16th. I would like everybody to come. Like she wanted to be. Good afternoon, how y'all doing? I get the Lord is good. Y'all sound like it. I get the Lord is good. Say, like Yahweh was truly a blessing to me and my mom, and my family. I'm a cousin on the Shaw side, and if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't know he was doing none of her family. I wouldn't even never know my cousins. We have a, a huge family on the Shaw side. And I don't forget when they actually came down uh, to one of my aunties' funerals. I met my cousin, Jamal, I met Shanae. But just through her there, bro, I just remember just sitting on, the sitting on the couch and just watching TV or just sitting outside and just watching the kids play like, auntie minded her business. She went on about her day. Didn't ask for much. I'm really, truly gonna miss her. And to the family, I love y'all. Thank you for always being there. You guys are like brothers and sisters to me. Thank you, RT, for allowing me to be able to be with you, opening up your doors to me and my mom, and we're truly gonna be missed. Thank you. 
afternoon. I speak on behalf of my brother Craig Taylor. He's not here, he's not able to attend these events. But I remember Deborah from my childhood. They seem to have been together on and off for a number of years. There is something that me and my sister Heisen was talking about, about Deborah. Deborah used to braid our hair when we were children. And let me tell you what was funny. Everybody else got their hair braided before mine. Before my. <clears throat> my sister Aisha would get hers braided because she had a different grade of hair. I was always last because my hair was thick and it was troublesome to, to braid. But Deborah never made me be last. She would get me first. I guess you have to get the hardest one over first. But one thing about her, she was the same. She did not change. She wore that smile regardless of what was going on. If she was in pain, you didn't know it because she was smiling. And you know, my brother's hurting right now, but that, that, was, that was his boo. All these years, back and forth, from, from time in and time out, even to the very end, he, it, it was his, 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 his boo. So what I'm saying to you as a family, we have always, we have always been like a blended family. You all have been a part of us and we've been a part of you. We've intertwined and all of these things, some of your nieces is my nieces and some of your nephews is my nephews and so on and so forth. We are still a family. Blended as we are, we are still a family. Even though this unfortunate event happened, it is to draw us closer, not further apart. It is to make us see each other and love each other. Regardless to whatever has happened before this, I'm gonna tell you to forgive, to pardon and to love one another because when you look, look to the look to your right, look to your left, look behind you. All of that is your family. That's your family. And when you recognize that it's your family, it doesn't matter where you are, you should recognize your family. You should love them. You don't get a second chance to tell them where you love them. But the one beside you, you can tell them that you love them. If I harmed you, if I offended you, please forgive me. Even to the end, I was praying for her to pull through. Praying for her to pull through. I know what God can do, so I'm praying for her to pull through. And for this family, Gwen, Bumbia, Jamal, Shanae, my girl Tootie, all of you, I'm praying for you. Because I know where you are, I have already been. And I know that you can overcome this if you will stick together. Don't let nothing separate you. Stick together. My last words, if one of you fall, all of you go to pull them up. Rescue them. Don't let them fall. Rescue them and hold on to them till they can get their foot. And if you reach the top, reach down and pull one of them up with you. And when you get up there the morning, you reach right in there and grab a couple of them and bring them up with you. Amen. Keep your focus. Don't look back. All we can do is look forward. Paul said in scripture, one thing that I do, forgetting those things which are behind. And I press toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. I want you to do that. This has happened. I want you to press now. Pull together like a rock, strong rope. And I need y'all to press together. Bombita, lead this thing out. Uh, you know, we know that's what your that's not your name, but that's what we call it. Jamal, I want you to stand shoulder to shoulder with Bombita. And Gwen, I want you to stand shoulder to shoulder with Shanae, and y'all push. If you have to push, push. If you have to pull, pull. But y'all stay together. She, didn't, she loved you all. And we love all of you. Amen. Thank each of you for acknowledges. This time we have acknowledgement resolution by Hart Jackson Mills on you know, staff.
Should I feel discouraged? And why should a shadow come? And why? Thank you. 
your mom, Deborah. We love you, Sister Michelle, Wilcher, and family. We'll give you sympathy, Betsy Evans, and family. Sometimes life is hard to figure out. Challenges and obstacles arise, and they were never in your plan. Yet God is always there to take us by his hand, walk with us step by step, and guide us through to the good he has for our lives. With love and sympathy, Vivian, Al, Jasmine, and Derek Davis. In love and memories from the Shaw family, and oh, from Plant City, the Shaw family in Plant City. Amen. This is to Deborah from Joan. Joan, you don't have anything else but just Joan. This comes from the Indian River County School Bus Transportation. Department of Deer Ridge. And this lovely floral arrangement that addresses Kathy with the roses intertwined with your foundation comes from this immediate loving family. Once again, from Hotchess Mills Memorial Funeral Home, thank you so very much. Hotchess Mills, Spivey, Licensed Funeral Home Director, Minister Spates, Licensed Funeral Home Director, in charge of service today. Thank you so very much. I love to pray.
Oh, my God. 
hear, God, that you speak to your people by the power of the Holy Ghost. We thank you in advance for what you're going to say, what you're going to do. We didn't come today, God, to entertain names or impress anyone, but we came to give your name praise. For you're the author and the finisher of our faith. You are a great consolator. God, we believe in you to be the lifter up of the hung down head. We thank you now for being our God and allowing us to be your people. This we ask in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. We honor the Lord today with respect to Pastor Ferguson, Pastor Jones, to Brother Slate. Amen. And to all clergy that are in the audience, thank God for this very fine choir. Amen. And most importantly, we thank God for this family. Amen. I want to begin by saying, family, we love you. We thank God for you. And I know people say this all the time, but I'm learning that you got to be careful with words. But I mean every word when I say this, that if there's anything that we can help you with and we're able to do it, we'll do it. Amen. Amen. Um, I, I, I'm going to shout y'all today. I'm not going to be long. Amen. But we want to give you what the Lord has given us. Amen. We thank God for Lady Will for that beautiful celebration. Come on. Give it up. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. From the word of the Lord, I, I want to uh, I want to try to talk. Amen. Uh, my, my wife talked about uh, Sister Deborah. Amen. And visiting us in Melbourne um, for a span of four years, I think it was. Um, I passed two churches here in Vero and in Melbourne. And um, not every revival, but almost every revival that I had, um, Sister Deborah would come at least one or two nights. And one of the things that I admire about people, um, you know, we, we sometimes, uh, judge people about what we've heard, or what we've seen, or what we know. And uh, she would come and she would sit there as I'm preaching, amen, and as a, not just any preacher, but as a young preacher, uh, when you capture the attention of people and they're saying amen, it means a lot. And she would sit, you know, in the back and uh, the power of God would be moving and she'd rock side to side. Uh, she'd cry sometimes and uh, on the way out of leaving service, she come and hug me. She say, you know I like to hear you preach and sing. Amen. And I thank God for her. Thank God for her confidence in me and her love for me. Amen. Uh, very quickly, amen. If y'all give me 15 minutes, I promise I'll, I'll try to be out of your way. Amen. I don't want to hold you long. Amen. Um, I do understand that uh, our four children are dealing with something, and we don't want to hold them here long. Amen. Amen. I heard Pastor Ferguson say this, and, and you know, we're going to continue to pray for them that God will strengthen them. Amen. Amen. Um, I often say this, and I'm just sharing this because the Lord told me to share this. I often say this. Um, my parents are dead, both my parents. And when I say that, not my biological parents, but the people that raised me. So I know how it feels when somebody that has been in your life, your whole life, you lose them. That's dramatic. It's devastating. Am I right? Uh, but I want to encourage you today to let you know that every step you take, God will be right there. Amen? He can do anything but fail. And all you got to do is just trust him and, and look to him. For years and years, we, we've dealt with people. And, amen. Uh, I'll, I'll be 44 years old in November. And uh, all my life been in the church. And I hear people say it all the time. Uh, you know, nobody told me that this road would be easy, but the latter part said, I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. And family, I want you to understand, and I'm already preaching tomorrow, but I want y'all to understand that it does not matter what people say about you, does not matter how they look at you, does not matter what they think about you, and definitely don't matter what they say, you are the apple of God's eye. And I want to encourage you today that whatever you ask him to do, he'll do it in his name. But I want to tell you today that all you got to do is just drop your pride and call on the name of the Lord. In the book of Isaiah, it says, call upon the Lord 
while he is near. Let the wicked man forsake his ways, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And I like the last part. He said, and call on the name of the Lord. Does that matter how low you are? Call on the name of the Lord. Does that matter how far you go? Call on the name of the Lord. Does that matter what you've done? But call. I'm going to say that he's a very present help in the time of trouble. In the book of Luke, Luke chapter 8, uh, we'll begin reading at verse 22. Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples and said unto them, Let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. Verse 23. But as they sailed, he, Jesus, fell asleep, and there came, a, came down a storm of wind on the lake. And they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him, Jesus, saying, they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. He arose, rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. Verse 25, and he said unto them, where is your faith? They being afraid wandered, saying one to another, what manner of man is this? For he commanded even the winds and the water, and they obeyed him. And I want to talk for the next 10 minutes from the subject, wake him up. Wake him up. Uh, for years, I, I, I said this earlier that uh, I was born and raised in the church and uh, you know, you have people that are in the house of God and they've been there for years and years and amen, they, they've been in positions for years and years and they've been doing things for years and years, year in and year out and once you get to a point of maturity, you begin to study their lives and see that there's no change in their lives. Can you say amen? I, I, I promise I won't be long. I'm, I'm moving out of your way. Uh, but one of the things that, that bothers me is that, amen, if you're in the house of God or in your natural life, if you're in a position for over two or three years and there's no change and there's no growth, you got to stop and wonder, amen, and evaluate what is your life and what are you doing with your life. And so here it is that in the disciples, they were chosen by God, by Jesus. And I mean, they walked with him. They saw him work miracles. They, they saw signs and wonders following him. And all of these things they did, amen. And they come to this point where again, a storm is on the sea. One of the things in my studies this morning, I was sitting there and I was reading Pastor Ferguson, amen. And I looked and it said that Jesus spoke to them in the beginning and said, let us go to the other side. One of the things that was significant, amen, is that if Jesus says something, it means there's nothing you or me can do about it. We can't change the course. We can't take it back. Amen. We can't get him to change his mind. The only thing we got to do is just obey and do what he said. But the indication of him telling them, amen, let us go, he included himself, let us go to the other side, it indicated, amen, that he was going with them, and no matter what happened on the journey to the other side, they were going to be all right. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Y'all scared me just a little bit, but I'm going to still preach. Amen. And as they're going, the Bible said they're in the ship, amen, and they're sailing. And as they sail, amen, the Bible talked about, amen, the sea, amen, of Galilee. And, amen. They were in the five mile, amen, span of the sea going from the width of the Sea of Galilee. And they were going, and I believe round about, amen, mile number two, the slave, amen, that the ship, amen, began to rock because the wind and the water became boisterous. And the Bible said that water began to get on the ship. And as the ship was taking on water, it meant us that understand, no, it meant that a ship was built and made to float on top of the water. Uh, but what you're on, if it starts to get in the ship, it meant that what you're in is going to sink because what was designed for you to stay above, if it gets in you, it meant you're going to go down. What you're saying, Pastor Will, I'm telling you that you're walking the valley of the shadow of death right now, amen, but God is giving you the ability to stay afloat. He's empowered you, amen. He's given you the 
the comfort and the courage to stay afloat. But you can't let what's going on around you, you can't let what's going on around you cause you to sink. Family, I want to encourage you today that no matter what comes, no matter what goes, God is holding you up. He's keeping you above the water. He's telling you to go ahead. Now is not the time to stop. Now is not the time to give up. If he said you can go through, look at your neighbor and say you can go through. If he told you that you were land, no devil in hell, no friend or foe can tell you anything else. Look at your neighbor and say you can go through. But you got to wake him up. As a little boy, I went to Sunday school, I went to Bible band, I went to Sunday morning service, Sunday night service, I went to revival, and then I went to quarterly conferences. All of these things we went, I attended, I was there, and I heard the word of God over and over, amen. I can probably preach from any verse, amen, in the Bible, but one thing that I never understood growing up until I came to maturity, that what I was reading on paper, I had to get it in my life. So, and so many times, amen, we look and we think because we read this word that it's going to change our lives, but you can read all day, but you got to put it on the inside. I want you to understand that once you get this word on the inside of you, and you begin to activate it and give it access to every area in your life, it'll become like a sword, and it'll cut out the things that don't need to be there. It'll cut out your own ways. It'll change your own mind. It'll change your own desires and give you a new start, but you got to wait Jesus. I'm going to my seat, Pastor Brown, uh, uh, Pastor Jones, but uh, as I was reading, the Bible said that they were taking on water. And I'm saying, well, uh, yeah, if there's a storm and the water is splashing, there's a certain amount of water that's going to get on the ship if it's raining. And I'm saying, God, what, what, what are you trying to show me? What's the revelation? He said, watch this. What you were designed to stay above, because the ship was designed to stay above the water, amen. but what do you do when the water comes from the opposite direction? I'm trying to stay afloat. I'm trying to keep it together. I want everything in my life to be right, but sometimes God will set you up, amen, to show you just how powerful he is, but we never tap into that part because we don't call him. Floating on the water, the Bible said that a storm came, and the storm and the wind affects the water, and the water begins to come not down from the sky, but it begins to come from under them over into the ship. And I want you to know, family, today that, that you today are uh, is that ship. You're the ship sailing, amen, and the water is coming down. It's coming from the north and from the south, coming from the east and from the west. And it seems like everywhere you're looking that you're being overcome and overwhelmed. But I want to let you know today that all you got to do is wake up Jesus. He's on the inside of each and every one of you. And all you got to do is just call on the name of the Lord. Seek to the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked man forsake his ways. And the unrighteous man his thoughts. The Lord said to me this morning, he said, tell the people that I've blotted out every transgression as a thick cloud. And I called your sin to go away as a cloud. But return unto me. Come back to your first love. Turn your face to me. Does not matter where you come from. Does not matter where you're trying to go. Just wake up Jesus on the inside of you. Stir it up on the inside of you. And I guarantee to you today that every living thing will be all right. I say this all the time for Mattel, Toys R Us, any name brand, Nautica, Tommy Hilfiger. When they make their product, they put their name somewhere on it to signify and let you know who made it. Each and every one of you in here have a soul. And I know people tell us, well, because you don't attend church faithfully, or you, you, you don't say that you're a Christian and you know whatever, and then you got to stop listening to everything everybody says. 
Because one thing they forget to tell you, they want to down you and cast you out because you're not living the way they're living or they think you are a leader. But, but you got to tell them that, listen, baby, it does not matter what I'm doing. Jesus is on the inside of me. Am I right about it? I might be the one that's walking around that ain't walking up yet, but he's on the inside. And all I got to do, amen, at the meeting time is just call on his name. And he's not hard of hearing. If I call him, he'll answer. The Bible said that as they were taking on water, the disciples were afraid. They went down, Jesus being bottom of the boat, went down and woke him up. Another thing that puzzled me, any time, you know, I've been on boats and ships before, not, not something that I really like because I can't swim. <laughs> but if Jesus, Pastor Brown is, I mean, Pastor Jones, is at the bottom of the boat and they're taking on water, uh, something would let me know that he would know the water's there. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Uh, and then he gave me this revelation. Uh, he told me, he said, listen, just because I'm asleep doesn't mean that I don't know what's going on around me. Because sometimes, watch this, we'll sit and we we'll allow our problems or our situation to be amplified and magnified and they blow up and, and it gets out of our control and we'll say that God is not there, but he's there all the while. He just wants you to call him. Because watch this, if you don't acknowledge him to him, you don't believe in him and he does not exist. The Bible said if you come to God, you must the first believe that he is and he's a rewarder to them that what? Diligently seek him. Family, call him. He's not hard of hearing. He's not biased, he's not racist, he's not sexist. Whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you've done, I don't care what it is, you can call on the Lord and he will come to your rescue. But you gotta wake him up. As little children, uh, we would be playing in the house and you know, grandma would take a nap and she'd say, don't wake me up. Universal rule, you know, if you're playing, and we tell you not, we couldn't, certain times we couldn't go outside. Stay inside, and if you played, you had to play quietly so that you wouldn't wake up the monster. <laughs> can y'all tell I said, you can't wake up the monster, but watch this. So we had to learn to, to, to play without a lot of fuss so we wouldn't wake up. Am I right about it? But if an emergency came, it did not matter, amen, because she was sleeping. But if there was an emergency, you call because they need to know about it, because they have the right and the authority to handle the situation. Not because they're in the house, but because you belong to them and they are guardians over you. And what I'm saying, what you're saying, Pastor Webb, I'm saying today that Jesus is in your house. And you tip it around because you're afraid to wake him up because you're thinking that your sins are so great and you've done so much dirt to where he don't want to deal with you. But baby, I want you to know that you're right in the right place. So you, though your sins be great, he's coming to you first. All you got to do is wake him up. God bless you.